is actually an added. Here's the portal. This cross cuts into quartz vein that's trending to the northwest on the top of the ridge. Now from the portal of the Hardy Mine, you can see where it cross cuts into a large rhyolitic dike here on the ridge to your right. The original workings are up there on the top of the hill, and that's where they found extremely rich ore in the outcroppings of rhyolite. In fact, it assayed out to an ounce and a half per ton. You can see the silica vein outcropped along this rhyolitic dike all the way up the top of the ridge. You have two shafts that reach a depth of 300 feet, and they eventually connect in with the crosscut that I just went into. This vein structure actually goes across the ridge for several thousand feet and connects in with the home stake jackpot mine. It mostly produced gold, silver, and fluorite with secondaries of manganese oxide. Currently, they are bringing drilling rigs up to the top of the ridge here to actually locate new and untapped ore bodies. And you can see the quartz vein traveling all the way across the ridge to the other side where the home stake mine is. And in fact, they have tours at the home stake on weekends. Of course, they pull the sleepers up. Look at the mud daubers. See that? I got a shear zone of rhyolite on the right. That would be my hanging wall. I got some mineralization, but like I said, if I had to guess, this was drifted in here as a cross cut to get into that quartz vein. And the cross cuts usually run at a 45. 45 degree to the vein that they're trying to intersect. I don't feel any air flow in here. It looks like we hit our first alteration zone. It looks like we have a dike here. And you have, yeah, there's a basaltic dike. You see it right there? It's a no-brainer. So they obviously were going to stoke that out and see if it was worth anything, if it had any values. You can see the chill margins on the outer edges there. See that? But it's a good place for mineralization when you have dikes of basalt cutting across granitic rock. And of course, rhyolite is in the granite, granite family. I've got some more low angle fault systems in here. I've got some manganese oxide in here as well. Low angle faults. The rock structure has changed and it looks like it's altered andesite, which is a no brainer in this area. I can see the Alkali feldspar in there. We got some ground fall. More alteration zones. <clears throat> it looks like a collapse. Obviously softer rock. I can smell sulfides. You can see alteration zones here. You can see gypsum crystals precipitating out. I don't know if you can see that, but they're right there. You can see the alkali feldspars in there, which is a no brainer. Okay, let's take a look. Definitely smell sulfides. Rock structure is changing. Looks like we're getting into quartz monzonite. Very, very soft altered. Here's another shear zone right here. See that? There's your hanging wall. And they were trying to cross cut. See they're drifting along this contact zone right here. Do you see that? Hoping for more mineralization in this contact zone right here. 
See where it's come up against this other rock type? See the slick inside, how smooth it is? And these shear zones. Obviously nothing in it. I've got water here, remnants of water. I got day sight, that's day sight. So we're obviously into the, uh, the rhyolite structure on the hill with the quartz vein. I can still smell sulfides, exploratories. Still cross cutting, still cross cutting. You can see the mineralization is changing. That's all backfill. Another shear zone. Here's your hanging wall. Look at how this rock has been fractured and crushed. It's a good place for mineralization. Again, you're looking for mineralization in this zone right here. See that? Right at this contact zone. And that's what they were looking for. These are tiny little exploratory cross cuts. That's actually really small cross cut. You can see where the vein structure is right above my head. Oh, you can see these open voids. This is classic, beautiful. You can see where the fissures have opened up in this rock and you can see where the hydrothermal fluids have been seeping up in through there to create that alteration. You see that? Oh, that's a perfect example. And you can see where the voids are still open. And then another episode of hydrothermal fluids will flow in there again. Most likely if there's another magmatic intrusion or if there's uh, faulting in the area, which will release pressure. Beautiful example. Love that. Look at those voids and spaces. That's why they were starting to stoke this out. But I'm not seeing a lot of heavy mineralization in it. So this gives you an idea of how veins are created. Quartz veins, silica veins, is you have these fault systems with these veins. Oh, I see a lot of calcite in there too. And the fluids will rush up and fill these voids. And then as they cool and the temperature drops and the pressure drops, it'll start to precipitate out quartz and any mineral assemblages that are in there. And so as you can see in this one, it did fill it, but it wasn't enough and it re retracted. So now if there was another, uh, now if there was another earthquake, then you could have more fluids rush up in through here or another magma intrusion, which is either going to create meteoric waters to flow up in here once they're heated or magmatic waters, which is coming off of the magma chamber itself. Got some stoles, a little bit more stoping. Looks like they cross cut it that way. Looks like they were starting to open this up. But I don't think the mineralization is very good in these vein structures. They just, it just doesn't look good. So they're following it here. Do you see it here on the back? Hoping that it's going to get better. Still drifting. The air is getting warmer. You can see all these pockets of alteration where the fluid is seeped in and started to alter the country rock. Come to a junction. Air is definitely getting warmer. So they got to this point. Here's that fault system right here. Do you see it? So they followed here. This one is going to continue to follow it that way. This one is doing a cross cut to see if there's a parallel vein system nearby, maybe with better mineralization in it. I got a little bit of black manganese oxide. Oh, look at that. Look at the oxides in that. I bet you there's a ton of sulfides in that. 
Look at that. These are just beautiful examples of the silicates that are in place inside of these fissures. And you can see the you can see the different episodes right there. You see it? So a lot of times you'll have silicates and carbonates alternating in these hydrothermal systems back and forth, back and forth. And that's going to create banding. And whenever you have open spaces, you have room for crystallization to form. You see that? Beautiful example. That is nice. Then on the other side, you have this vein structure, which is on the hanging wall. You see a lot of black manganese oxide. That's always good in the mix when you're looking for gold deposits. Another cross cut, obviously into the country rock where it's been heavily altered, but they didn't find anything. Still along this fault zone, mini cross cut, nothing in it. Air's getting warmer again. They're still following this fault system right here. You see that? Wow. Look at that. Look how buggy it is. You can see traces of fluorite. Look at that. The green fluorite that's in there. Beautiful example. You can see where you had boiling going on in there. Maybe some bladed quartz replaced by calcite. Another mini cross cut. Still following this vein. Oh, more examples. See, this is a natural open fissure right here. All this is natural open. See that? And you have all this black manganese oxide coating it on the outside. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful vein structures. And then you have these small veinlets here on the side, running parallel. And you got oxides in there. That would be good too, to sample. The vein structure is changing. See how wide the vein system is now? Air's getting warmer. Now we're back into that structure again. You can see the green fluorite. You can see the oxides right in here. See that? There's the green fluorite right there. Natural spaces and bugs all through here. This is a classic example. This would be perfect for gold deposition, but obviously there's not. Wow, look at that. Look at the calcite that's in there. See all the open spaces and bugs? Beautiful. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Lots and lots of black manganese oxide. See that? Looks like they stoked it. Wow, look at all these open spaces in this hydrothermal vein structure. Isn't it beautiful along this fault? That's why faults are so important. That's why faults are so important. Looks like they're getting ready to sink a shaft. That looks nice. You can see the green fluorite. Right. Oh, those are nice pieces of fluorite. You see that? Right there. Oh, I gotta get a sample of that. Beautiful fluorite. Oh, that's nice. Right there, see it? Oh, that's a nice piece of fluorite. Right there. That's all calcite and fluorite. Look at this. Let's see what it looks like with a black light. Wow, you see that? Isn't that pretty? Holy cow. Beautiful mineral assemblages. Look at that. My main light that I was using for recording decided to stop working. The switch on the side finally broke and that's why it flickered twice. I wasn't expecting to go in very far on this mine because it didn't look large. So I decided that only one light was needed that I was going to use from my camera. And I didn't bring a secondary flashlight. All I brought was my black light with me. So you can imagine the surprise that I got when I went to go turn that light back on and it didn't work. And that was the only light that I had at the time, except for that purple black light, which only gives you 
through enough light to see minerals and that's it now you can hear me clicking that light on and off and i start to realize that it's not working so i try to remove the battery and put it back in hoping maybe there was a bad connection and it was at this exact moment that i had realized i had made a big mistake and i was going to have a lot of fun trying to find my way out of this mine in complete darkness <laughs> kidding me well this is gonna be interesting with you, just in case. Okay. Okay. Now my lights turned off. That'll wake you up in the morning. trying to feel my way around to get out. <laughs> I was like, oh crap. I can barely see with this purple light. Yeah. <sighs> if you like the video, you know what to do. You better smash that like button, smash it hard. Till next time, this is Jeff Williams and who? That's Walter, that's who. Saying, you wanna find gold? Ow, but you're not sure what to do? Follow my quick, easy tips, and you'll be getting boatloads of AU. Take care, everybody. <laughs>